Hello, hello. Uh, hope everybody is doing well. We are live from the Bard's Bounty, of course. Well, we won't be live by the time they see it. I mean, okay, right um, at 6.58 p.m. We are live from the Bard's Bounty. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Um, so we thought we would do something a little different this week. Uh, we're going to sort of show you how we go about learning a song and uh, how we put new songs into the repertoire. And uh, so this one's gonna be a little strange. Um, so we ask for suggestions from you folks out there on the Facebook. And uh, we, we had a lot of really good ones uh, from, from So Lonesome I Could Cry to Amy Mann music. I love Amy Mann, Till Tuesday. But um, we decided to go with uh, um, uh, uh, was it Adele. Yeah. Right? Rolling in the deep. Sorry, it just ran away from me for a second. So the first thing we got to do is um, we figure out exactly what key it's going to be in, what key is best for her voice and my voice. And sometimes that's a difficult thing to find a key that works for both of us. Um, so she does it, I think, in... Adele? Yeah. <laughs> okay. She does it in, I want to say... Uh, fourth fret, so that's going to be, that uh, would normally be a C sharp minor for most people, but my guitar, I keep it tuned to half step down, so this is a C minor. Okay. Uh, so this is where she kind of does it. And where does she start? Wait, what do you mean? Where does she so start? When she gives it that, where, what, what pitch does she start on? There's a... There's a fire. Starting in my heart, reaching my fever pitch, it's bringing me out the dark. Finally, I can see you crystal clear. Go ahead and sell me out, and I'll lay your ship bare. See how I leave with every piece of you. So, when, when she gets to the highest part, I'm, I'm assuming the highest part is the chorus, right? Yeah, the chorus. So that's obviously that's a little high for you, right? Does I mean, that feel maybe like? just okay. part of what I have to do with Jules is I kind of have to depend on her to tell me where things feel comfortable and where things feel like a push. So what we'll do a lot of times is we'll start where the actual singer does it on the radio, and then I'll go, okay, let me take it down a half step and take it. So we've established that you can do the verse. Take it so we could have had it. No, was it too high, too low? <laughs> too high. Too high, so we go down another step. That's fine. It's a process of elimination. And by the way, you can tell Jules has the lyrics on her phone in front of her. We do that a lot while we're learning. And the idea is we rehearse a song a whole lot before we bring it out to an audience. So by then, we don't we don't have to look at lyric sheets. Uh, could, could have had it all. Let's go one more let's step down, and, and, and eventually what we'll find is we'll find where it's too low, and we'll come back from that. Uh, we could have had it all. Too low or too high? You could have had it. Are you hitting that note comfortably? Oh. I mean, it's kind of more of a head it voice. It is, but that's the question. So. Do you want to go up into your head voice for that? Because the alternative, well, let's go down one more. <laughs> and you, maybe you can that, do is it. Is that as, the lowest we can go? No, we can always, we can, I can always change the chord voicings, but okay. doing the chord voicings that that guitar player is using this is this I'm at the end of the instrument now which would be a flat minor we could have had it all.
be. See, I feel like you're not having to go into your head voice I'm at not, all. There. And so if that's if if you want to keep it in the belt range, in the in the the chest throat. I kind of like that. You kind of like that. So if we were gonna do that, so now the question is, are the low parts too low? So there's a starting in the preaching a fever pitch and springing me out. Yeah, but I mean, it, the, the trick is, I mean, she that's why Adele's Adele. She's got an amazing range. She can go way low, and she can go way high without pumping up into a falsetto. So the question then becomes, there's a fire. Can you, do you want to, if, if you get really deep breath and a lot, of, a lot of tummy support, can you go down that low, and is it worth it to make the trade-off so you don't have to go into head voice? Do it one more time. Well, let's A, B it. So, we could have had it all. That feels to me like you're not yeah. having to go up into a falsetto for the for the chorus, but you're also not having to go down here for the verse. Yeah, the key is just. It's always yeah, support, support, right. support, support. You can't if you can't breathe, you can't sing. So next thing then we do once we've decided on where the key is, then we figure out the parts. So there's really three parts to this song. There's the verse, then there's what's called a pre-chorus. And then there's the chorus. There is a pre-chorus. So let me show you what. So the 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 verse is really easy. It's just A minor. So for you that's going to be A. Thumbing on that A. Should I just go? No. I, I want to save. I want to save that for the for the. Um, pre-chorus. For the yeah, I want to save that for when we get in the pre-chorus. That that thunder thing. Boom boom boom. That's about where I want to sit. line there's a G. So that's the verse, okay? Then when you go into the pre-chorus, that's where I want to hit the quarter notes. Ba, 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 ba. Okay. But here's the but here's the the um, the pre-chorus structure. It goes F, pause R, G, E, so okay. to the F. So that's the pre-chorus okay. structure. So it's the scars of your love remind me of. They keep me thinking that we almost had it all Scars of your love, they leave me breathless I can't help feeling because So that, yeah, so that's the pre-chorus And that, so thrumming on those quarter notes Bum, 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 bum That's gonna be real, that's gonna be a really cool drive In fact, I want more of you There we go, a little bit more So yeah, so it's just that that F, 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 G, 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 G,
the actual chorus is just the same thing as like that Tom Petty break down. Go ahead. It's just A minor G F. We, we could have had it all. Oh. So that's it. There's the only those three parts of the song. So let's do them all that's together one time. Easy, it, it really actually is. So baby, no, remember that one's oh, just gonna okay, be. Okay, we're doing the first. Bop, okay. bop, bop, yeah. So I'm, we're just gonna review the three parts. So the the verse part is. Bum, bum, bum. down the F. I'm already starting to sort of like play with harmony. A lot of how we figure out our harmonies is kind of trial and error. I'll try something and it'll sound really bad and I'll go, man, not trying that again. Um, but you just, that's, that's kind of the only way to figure out harmonies is, what if I try a third? Okay, what if I try a fifth? What if I try this? What if I try that? And, and you just gotta find, you know, what, what, sound, what should sound good mathematically, because like you guys are learning about intervals in choir right now, right? Shout out to Miss Hayes. Shout out to Miss Hayes. <laughs> what should sound good mathematically doesn't always sound right. Some songs need this and some songs need this. You know, just because you're doing bluegrass or gospel, you know, the third or the fifth doesn't always, sometimes you, you need like a cool jazz thing or something. Mm. So like, Okay, so how do you feel on, on lyrics right now if we wanted to try to stumble through it? This is the next thing we do is stumble through. You want to stumble through it? Try yeah, it. Yeah, let's stumble. And also, I, sometimes I'll mess it up because I scroll. Right. And, this and is why it's the best thing to memorize the words. The lyrics. Then you can focus on, the, then you can focus on your fingers. But yeah, we'll, okay, so we'll, we'll just try to stumble through and just get a sense of what the, the structure of the song. Verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and so forth. All right, so you're gonna, you've got the lyrics in front of you, so you're gonna have to tell me when certain verse and chorus things are coming up. I'll try to let you know when certain chordal things are coming up. So, and I'm also gonna turn down because it's important for us to listen to each other at this point, not to try to blow each other away here with volume. Why don't we start out with just you and the guitar? Because like she starts out with That's just my the favorite. boom, boom, boom. You know, she boom. starts out with that. Some guy's on the kick bass and he's just. and soul in you your hands inside what is it you have you my, my heart inside of your hands 
can't tell what she's saying there. And and a lot of times when you can't tell what an artist is saying, you just both have to agree on whatever you're gonna sing. Because people are not, I've heard, I've, I've, I have some hilarious stories of misheard lyrics that people thought I was singing. And uh, turned out I wasn't. Well, yeah, I did that to you once. What? Pop-Tart. I don't remember that one. No, from the, you know. Yeah, and it's give me like, a song step title. on the nail. <laughs> Why can't I remember the name of the song? Wait. I don't know what you're talking about. Stepped on the nail like Bob Marley? Okay, right. move on. Yeah, so you had the heart inside <laughs> your hand and you played it to the beat? Is that what it is? You really thought it was in soul? I have no idea what it is. I don't listen to this, this stuff. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we could have had it oh, Rolling in the deep You have the heart inside of your hands And you played it to the beat And back to the verse Baby, I have no story to be told So this is one of the key things in terms of song arrangement, because now we, okay, so we've got a key, we know where she sounds good singing it, we kind of have the structure figured out, but at some point, you have to give yourself up to the idea that like, we're not doing her version of the song, and we're not doing the version of the song from Glee, or whatever it was. Okay. We're, we're doing our Glee. version, and, and she's a big Glee fan. But, but you gotta decide that you're doing your version, and if you're not gonna do your version and make it like, you know, individualized, if you're not going to do it the way you want to do it, feel special. then you might, yeah, if you're not going to feel special, you might as well just listen to the recording. So, uh, so we can kind of do it any way we want to. Um, and the other thing that happens a lot of times is we don't figure out exactly our favorite way to do these songs in terms of how many verses, how many choruses, where to start and where to end them, until we've played it in front of people a few times. Usually it's just because I mess it up and then... No. <laughs> well, sometimes, I mean, some, and sometimes, but see, here's the thing, and this is, we've talked about this before. If you're consistently messing up, I, I don't want to use that, but consistently messing up a song in a certain way, either playing a certain uh, chord or, or putting a stop in a certain place or, or changing around over that kind of is your subconscious telling you man this is the way i think this song wants to be played 
this is the way we want to do it. And if it, if it consistently happens enough, obviously you've got two choices. You can try to fix it and just pound it down with a hammer, or you can say, you know what, I think our version of this song ends after that second chorus, whatever it is. But you got to be open to doing it your way. You can't, you can't try to, re it makes me crazy when people go to concerts and they're like, oh man, that guitar player, he didn't do the solo like it was on the record. And he didn't, you know, they, oh, they didn't do the thing like it is in the recording. It's like, then just stay home and listen to the recording, right? Do it, do it your way. I want to have a live experience. I want to know when I'm listening to that artist do that song, they're never going to do that song exactly the same way that I'm listening to them do it right now, ever again. And that's why this moment's special. So let's do this. So so it goes, verse, pre-chorus, chorus. Hold on. Right? Okay, we're counting. Yeah, verse, pre-chorus. Chorus. Verse, well, verse, verse, pre-chorus, chorus. Okay. Verse, pre-chorus, chorus. Chorus. Right. Uh, chorus. Two choruses. Uh, yeah, verse. And then straight into, straight the into chorus, a chorus, which is weird because the pre-chorus is my favorite part. Okay, so let's just do two choruses and get out at the end. We don't need to do three. Okay, but the last chorus is like, but you played it, you played it, you played Well, that's the thing. You can put any of that in there earlier than you want. The other thing you got to keep in mind is one of the reasons that they repeat choruses over and over again in like the recorded version is they're working with all different kinds of instruments and they can do something different like every time, oh, this last chorus, let's put the drums in here. And then this next chorus, oh, we'll bring in the organ. And then the next chorus, oh, let's, let's bring in the strings. And, and they can do that because they have all these instruments. We got a bass and a guitar and our two voices. And unless we're playing with Abe, Abe, wherever you are, we miss you. Um, uh, or playing with, you know, Kale on sax or somebody like that. Um, we're we're kind of, Kale does in fact slap. Um, we, we just got this. And so as a result, repeating a chorus over and over again a bunch of times, it's just us repeating the same thing over and over again a bunch of times. So shorter and sweeter is sometimes better. All right, so let's see if we can keep close to that and let, we'll try to stumble through it one time. This the last time. Yeah, let's see. Well, if we can stumble through it, okay. So what, and, and the trick is, let's not, we won't take it too fast, but um, try to make your focus on getting the, the lyrics right and getting the structure right. And if every bass note isn't exactly where it needs to be, we're not worried about that right now. Throw it out the we'll, 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 get, we'll get there. But right now we want to get it in our head as a whole song. Um, one of the difficulties that you have sometimes when you're learning a song is you learn, you spend a lot of time learning the verse, and then you spend a lot of time learning the chorus. And so you have those two pieces down, but how you get from point A to point B gets a little neglected. You gotta start at some point thinking of the song as a whole. Usually I forget the verse by the time we learn the chorus. Well, there you go. See, so you gotta start thinking of the thing as a, as a whole entity. All right, ready? I'm gonna try to take it and, and the other thing we played with too is dynamics. Everything can't just be as loud as it could possibly be all the time. You that wanna start nice. and you wanna build and then you wanna drop and you wanna build. That's the dynamics are what keeps it interesting.
So there's a ton of things I can already hear that I want to change about that. There's a place where I want to put a transition cord. No, it's fun for a stumble through. That's great. And but like that's what we do is we get it down layered there, and then I I say okay, now that we're we're there, and when we get secure with that. Maybe we can get a little bit more complex on the bass part during the, the chorus. Or maybe we can put a transition chord there, getting from that last verse into the chorus. Or, you know, we can add more harmony or do things like that. But, but the trick is to get down what you want down first. And then, uh, then you, you get to where you want.